Sponsored by Simple Contacts. I've been wearing an Apple Watch since the product launched in 2015, and a Series 4 since that version launched in September of 2018. That's almost as long as I wore my old calculator watch in high school, far, far longer than I imagined ever wearing a watch as an adult. I was never into wristwear as jewelry, and my phone quickly became my timepiece. So yeah, I was one of those. But even when Apple Watch was still just a whisper, it intrigued me because I instantly knew just exactly what its killer feature would be for me, convenience. Just like my iPhone meant I no longer had to go racing back to my Mac just to get an important subset of things done, my Apple Watch would mean I didn't have to even reach for my phone for, sure, a smaller subset, but a brief, frequent, and important one. That's basically why my mom wanted an Apple Watch the moment she saw it as well. She was moving to the plus-sized phone and was worried that, keeping it in her purse, on her counter, or plugged in, she'd miss messages and calls from her family and friends. The watch solved that perfectly. Same for other family members and friends who wanted to be able to leave their phones behind, but still stay informed and connected. Later, as Apple began focusing more on health and fitness and safety, expanding the heart rate monitor, adding emergency services and fall detection, my thinking evolved along with it. The new, far more important killer feature was literally saving lives. We upgraded my mom to a Series 4 immediately, and several of my friends got them for themselves and their parents as well, and just exactly for that reason. Now though, having worn an Apple Watch for almost four years and the latest one for over six months, I'm starting to think less narrow or maybe just less extreme. Sure, Apple Watch makes many of the brief, frequent, and important things you do every day more convenient. And yes, from detecting issues with your heart to calling 911 when you simply can't get to your phone, it could help save your life when and if you need it most. But even when you don't need it to check a message, control a light, tap a payment, track a workout, or yeah, save your life, it's still with you, keeping you informed, keeping you connected, keeping you mindful, and keeping you moving. And yeah, keeping you safe. It's become, at least for me, an ultra-personal, ambient, always attached, always on computing presence. In other words, it's become an inextricable part of my life. And not in the super thirsty smartphone way, but in the kind of super chill Apple Watch way. And yeah, it's not perfect. And all shades of sad that I have to stop my flow and mention something so obvious right here and now, because a certain segment of the internet that just seems to hate anyone who doesn't immediately preemptively hate on anything first, so, before you start rage commenting, take a breath, unclench, I'll get to the missing features and feature parody, the things that still flummox and frustrate me soon enough, and while you're at it, hit subscribe and hit the little bell dingus so you won't miss your next chance to rage comment on my next re-review, coming soon. I'm Renee Ritchie, and this is my Apple Watch Series 4 and Watch OS 5 review, six months later. And also, Vector. Okay. Here's the thing, I'm a little late. It's closer to seven months now than six, but after reviewing the aluminum at launch, checking out the gold steel in Nike Plus a couple of weeks in, and following up with the Hermes some two months after, I got delayed slightly by some new iPads, AirPods, and yeah, services. But I've been able to use the extra time to collect extra information, and from people beyond my own typical use cases, and frankly, the typical tech sphere considerations. I've also gotten to use the latest watchOS update, which adds ECG to Hong Kong and 19 countries across Europe, including France, Germany, Italy, Spain, and the United Kingdom. Also, and more applicable to me, some new watch face variations for Nike and Hermes, and AirPods 2 support, which makes a great pairing even better. Like, I don't know, dark chocolate and crunchy peanut butter better. There are also new watch bands for the spring. For the sports bands, there's new Spearmint Green, Delft Blue, and Papaya Orange. For Nike, Hyper Grape, Spruce Fog, and Teal Tint. For the sport loops, Papaya Orange, Cerulean Blue, Spearmint Green, and Lilac Purple. For Nike Loop, Spruce Fog, Teal Tint, Hyper Grape, and Summit White. For the Modern Buckle and Leather Loop, Cornflower Blue, Sunset Orange, and also Lilac for the Buckle. And for the Hermes, Single and Double Tours in Rose Sakura, Cray, Argile Swift, Bleu Laine, Cray, Bleu du Nord, and Itoupe. I like the papaya, but I love the Hyper Grape. So if you already have an Apple Watch and you aren't the least bit interested in upgrading, you can still give yourself a freshly upgraded look for the spring. Not much has changed for me over the last few months when it comes to using Apple Watch as a watch. I'm still all in on Infograph Modular as my getting things done face. It's almost all the data I need throughout the day, available at a glance whenever I raise my wrist. I know other people prefer infographic analog, I just find it faster to visually parse the digital. When I'm not working, I switch to something simpler. Hermes if I'm going out, which is better than ever. 
first earlier this year with the two-tone faces and, as of last week's update, new gradient faces. And as an aside, it's great to see Apple updating those and the Nike faces more than just yearly. I do wish there was a way to have the watch faces switch automatically, based on time, like start or end of the workday or week, or location, like arriving at the gym. I'm still loving the bigger display. I switched back to a Series 3 for a few days just to see if I'd miss it. And while the old bezels are still fine, they're also still bezels. And once you get used to the display being opened up, it's tough to go back, especially because of those new infograph faces. Bad news, the older faces still haven't been optimized for the bigger display. I still find them much better looking on the old watches. Good news, the older complications for messages and mail now work on the new infograph faces. I haven't mentioned the Siri watch face yet. It's gotten much better, but its data still doesn't beat the utility of complications for me. And yeah, I have fussed with the sources, I just can't find a combination I like. I know a lot of people still want custom faces, but I'd seriously be happy with photo for everything else if I could just get two things. An analog option and a bunch more complications, then I'd be able to make almost any custom face I want, simply, easily. If you still want all the custom faces though, let me know in the comments. I've also been using Infograph Modular for travel, having local and destination time, or local and home time once I've arrived, even a timer showing how much longer I'll be in the air. It's amazing how just little things like that can make travel better. Apple Watch is also still super convenient for me when I'm traveling, when I'm dragging bags behind me, when I don't want to or simply can't fumble for my phone, I can just easily tap for everything, from paying for coffee to boarding the plane, and still often faster than the people next to me who got there before for me, struggling with change or paper passes in their pockets. I've been using an Apple Watch with cellular since they first came out, roughly 18 months ago, and for a long time I didn't really benefit from it since I always took my iPhone with me everywhere as well. Even when I was just out for walks, I'd play Pokemon Go or something that meant the phone had to just come with me. This winter was especially bad in terms of ice, and that meant it was especially bad in terms of going outside though, so I ended up walking more inside and without an iPhone. And as things melted and I started going out again, I also started leaving my iPhone at home, so I wouldn't be staring at it so much and I could keep my head up and not down. And it works so great, especially with the new second generation AirPods. I can listen to podcasts and audiobooks, which I do far more than music, but yeah, music too. And Siri takes care of all the controls. And if important messages or calls do come in, I can triage them or answer them if I have to without missing a step, much less a connection. It's so good that when I see other companies or even just other YouTubers talk about using worse phones designed to make you want to spend less time on them, I kind of have to wonder, if you don't want to get lost on Twitter or Insta, don't get a second phone. Don't get an old phone. Just throw your iPhone in your bag and leave it in your pocket and keep your social hygiene clean with Apple Watch. One thing I still haven't been using as much though is the new walkie-talkie feature. I just don't have much reason to. But because I never want to mistake my experience for anyone else's, I asked out loud and a bunch of you told me that you do indeed use it for everything from quickly sending messages to family to coordinating while out shopping. I'm not sure if push to talk voice should integrate more fully with messaging, but it feels like there's some similarity of use case and maybe there could be some coalescing going on there. For me, the staccato rhythm of it is still less easy to use than just FaceTime audio. Either way, I'm continually surprised by how much better the speaker and mic are, especially the mic. More than a few times, people I've been speaking to haven't realized I've been on my watch instead of on my phone. It doesn't noise cancel anywhere nearly as well, of course, so anything like wind will be a dead giveaway. Inside, on a calm day though, it's crystal. I'm still struggling at times with the no need to say hey to Siri function. I bring my watch up, rotate my wrist, and start talking. But too often it takes more than one try. Let me know how it's working for you in the comments. When Siri does hit though, it hits faster now. In general, like I said in my two month review, the 64-bit Apple S4 system and package remains so good, performance is no longer something I even think about, much less worry about. Same with battery life. Six months later and I can still get through a day and a half or two days, depending on how many workouts I track. All the fitness features remain stellar on Apple Watch and the new ones are still among my favorites. Specifically, automatically starting and stopping workouts now because I still forget sometimes, maybe even more now because I know the watch has my back. I recently had the chance to speak to a bunch of runners, including marathoners and ultra marathoners, and they all remarked about how consistent and accurate the readings are, even staying locked onto GPS where bigger, more dedicated devices would sometimes fail. One of them mentioned she wished she could upload intervals in advance, which is way beyond my level of comprehension, but sounded super cool when she explained it. 
I also managed to spend a couple hours chatting with adventure runner Ray Zahab, who does things like run 50 kilometers a day for 100 days across the Sahara. And he's doing everything on Apple Watch now, including downloading 3D maps with elevation and his resupply stops, so you know, he doesn't die in the middle of the Arctic or some desert somewhere. Just this week, I had the chance to try out the ski workouts on a much higher mountain than I'm used to, Whistler, BC. It was in the middle of a ski and snowboard festival, and it was amazing to see how many skiers, including Olympic gold medalists, were using Apple Watch. I also tried out the yoga workout, which I've never done before. Don't judge me. I've done Tai Chi, Shingi, Bagua, just never yoga, and it worked really well. So did the skiing. So well, I'm really hoping Apple adds more Canadian-friendly workouts in the future. I'll joke about snow shoveling, but even outdoor walking in the snow, never mind the skating variants, would be terrific. I realize everyone in every climate and region probably has their own wish list, so let me know in the comments what's still on yours. The thing I like about it most, though, is the approach. Apple just tests the stuffing out of all of this stuff in real labs on real people doing real movement in the real world. And who'd have guessed it? All of that results in really useful functionality that keeps growing in diversity and usefulness over time. I said in a previous video that the Apple Watch was more important than the iPhone. That while PCs and phones have and will continue to save lives, nothing has ever done it before the way Apple Watch does it now. I'll start with the more dramatic stuff. It can alert you to irregular heart rhythms and with the ECG app that's now not only in the US, but in Hong Kong and a whole swath of the EU, AFib as well. It can also dial 911 for you if you're in trouble and can't reach your phone to do it yourself. That includes a new fall detection feature, which I've had fun testing out, but which a good friend of mine ended up triggering for real. She fell down her basement stairs and hurt herself badly enough that she needed help. A family member ended up hearing her, but the fall detection went off on her watch and offered to call 911, and she talked about it for days, because it was just luck that her family member had been home at the time. And that's a feature that takes a piece of technology from being valuable to being invaluable in the blink of an eye, or the miss of a step. I know it absolutely sucks if the ECG app isn't in your country yet, because while I've used it on a US watch, it isn't on mine yet. But Apple seems intent on pushing it out in as many places as possible as quickly as possible, which means working with as many local medical and regulatory people as possible. So I'll reserve judgment until I see how far they get by the end of the year. When I was talking to Ray though, he also pointed out something I hadn't even considered. He used the data himself as well, personally. He said he could never get enough health data and used heart rate, resting heart rate, all of it, to figure out everything from caloric intake to how to optimize sleep for the massive amounts of recovery he needs during training and after excursions. He literally could not stop talking about how much of a revelation it had been to him as an athlete. And I think we're only gonna hear those kinds of stories more. And that's just the hardware and software side. Given how important services in general have become to Apple and the potential for healthcare services in specific, something I've covered in a previous video, link in the description, it takes zero effort or insight to say this is really just the beginning. Well, except in one area, eye care but that's where simple contacts come in. If you wear contact lenses and find yourself dreading that annual appointment to renew your prescription, then you're gonna love simple contacts. It's a great new company that makes this annoying process very, well, simple. Renew your expired contact lens prescription and reorder your brand of lenses from your phone or computer in minutes. You can take the Simple Contacts vision test online in five minutes. A real doctor reviews it, and if your vision hasn't changed, renews your prescription. And if you already have an unexpired prescription, just upload a photo of it or your doctor's info and order your lenses in minutes for a great price. They'll do all the hard work all for you. Best of all, you get $20 off your first Simple Contacts order just by going to simplecontacts.com slash vector20 or entering vector20 at checkout. Now, this isn't a replacement for your periodic full eye health exam. You still need that, but this is the most convenient way to renew a prescription and reorder your contacts if your vision hasn't changed. Again, get $20 off your first Simple Contacts order just by going to simplecontacts.com slash vector20 or entering vector20 at checkout. Thanks, Simple Contacts, and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. Over the last six months, I've come to realize something about the Apple Watch, thanks in large part to the advances in Series 3 and Series 4. As much as home assistants can do more and more at home, and phones are things we often have with us, the Apple Watch is something we can almost always have with us, literally on us, especially when combined with the new AirPods. It's the closest thing we have to real, ultra-personal, always-on, always-on-us ambient computing. 
It's not in our faces. It's not in our way. It's not captivating us or distracting us. It's just there, ready to provide information or help us out whenever we want to or whenever we need it to with the display or with the mic and speaker. It's not quite sci-fi yet, but it's getting there. The biggest downside is that the watch market and the truly wireless headphone market, like the tablet market, is almost entirely Apple's. And yeah, that's a downside because it means the personal wearables market, from silicon to hardware to software, has pretty much no real competition right now. Yeah, it's expensive in terms of time and resources to compete for this specific market, same as tablets, especially when phones are still so big for so many. But as a consumer, I always prefer several strong contenders in the market. But next time some pundit or internet expert complains Apple isn't innovating, politely point them to wearables, which is likely gonna be a far more important market than anything they're fixated on, at least over the next decade. Or, you know, just encourage them to subscribe to this channel. I know statements like that will piss off some of you, and this review not being manufactured to be more negative will piss off some more, and I could get a lot more views and subscribers a lot faster if I just yelled and complained mindlessly a lot more. I'm an optimist though. I love technology. I want the future today, which is why I'm so optimistic about Apple Watch, perhaps more than any other product I use, because it makes me feel like I'm getting more of the future today. Subjectively, I'm liking it more and more, not just every generation, but every month of every generation I'm using it. Objectively, it's delivering so much already and more every update. So six months in, is the Apple Watch Series 4 still worth getting? Coming off its first major redesign, we're unlikely to get another for a while. It's also likely to keep getting updates and new band options for a while. So my advice, as always, is if you can wait, wait as long as you possibly can wait, because there'll always be something new around the corner. But if you need it or would benefit from getting it now, absolutely get Apple Watch Series 4 now and have zero regrets because there will always be something new around the corner. So don't deny yourself anything you could benefit from today. At least that's my opinion. I'd love to hear yours. Hit like, hit subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And then hit up the comments below and let me know. And thank you so much for watching.